Omang, Ah Charlie Smith, Jong Panji, Georgia Strait. I'm the editor of the Georgia Strait, which is a weekly newspaper in Vancouver, and I'm happy to be back on WOW TV for another weekly roundup. I'm going to start with a political announcement earlier this week, and that was by um, Suzanne Anton, who's the Attorney General and Justice Minister and the MLA for Vancouver Fraser View, and she's announced a liquor policy review. And this review will not look at liquor prices. Uh, many people don't realize that British Columbia has the highest liquor prices in North America, but instead it's going to look at the availability of liquor and the announcement said that it's going to review outdated liquor policies. So what we can assume from that is that the government is going to make it easier to buy liquor. And in so doing, it will probably help the government in terms of revenues because they collect a lot of money on liquor taxes. So some of the things that are being examined are whether to allow people in spas to maybe have a glass of wine, whether you can bring children into pubs that uh, serve liquor, but also have food available. So um, there is talk of expanding the availability of liquor. But what I found most interesting about this story was actually the politics of it. And the person who's being put in charge of this review is John Yap. And John Yap is the MLA for Richmond Steveston, a former banker, and he's also the parliamentary secretary for liquor reform to the minister, Suzanne Anton. Well, John Yap, as many of us will recall, was in trouble before the election because he was the Minister of Advanced Education and he was responsible for multiculturalism. And in this role, uh, he played a key role in the government's uh, multicultural outreach strategy where the BC Liberal Party was using government resources against the rules uh, to advance its political interests. So this multicultural outreach strategy, what came out in a report by Christy Clark's chief of staff, was that uh, John Yap had actually used private emails because he wanted to bypass freedom of information legislation. Under the Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act, that uh, government documents are available to the public upon request. There are certain times when these documents will be exempt from being released, but by and large, many documents are available to the public. So what John Yap did was he used a private email account while they were conspiring on behalf of the BC Liberal Party to advance the party's interests using government funds. And for this, he resigned and was sent to the back benches. And many people didn't give a lot of thought about that because they thought the BC Liberals would probably lose the election. Well, what happened was, in a, in a surprise, the BC Liberals won the election, and then Christy Clark went to work on rehabilitating John Yap's reputation. So she made him the parliamentary secretary. She made him, put him on a cabinet committee on the strong economy um, and put him on a committee dealing with legislative reform. And part of the issue, which has not really been covered by the media, uh, deals with, with the community of people of Chinese descent. The BC Liberals only have three MLAs of Chinese descent. One is Teresa Watt in Richmond Center, a well-known media executive, and she's now been appointed the Minister of International Trade for Asia Pacific and the Minister responsible for multiculturalism. She's a rookie. Another one is Richard Lee, who's the M MLA for Burnaby North. And Richard Lee, even though he's been in the legislature since 2001, has never been put into cabinet. And then the third person of Chinese descent is John Yap, uh, who some would say was, was quite a competent minister in terms of he's very articulate, he's able to deal with the media, but the problem he had was handling the multicultural file and basically doing the, the political dirty work for the BC Liberal Party. So my suspicion is that Christy Clark is using this liquor policy review, the Premier, to try to rehabilitate John Yap and put him in a position where he could be restored to cabinet in the future. And, and this is one step. So he'll consult people, they'll put up a government website, uh, and then a report will come forward, John Yap's name will be on it, and then this will be enough to get him into cabinet again. Um, part of the problem that Christy Clark has is that Theresa Watt has not exactly shone so far as a cabinet minister. 
In the legislature, she was asked tough questions by the NDP uh, about the multicultural outreach strategy. That's the, the scandal where the, the Liberal Party had to pay $70,000 back to the government for using government resources for party purposes. So she was asked about that. She tried to answer the questions. Eventually what happened was the BC Liberal Caucus put forward Andrew Wilkinson, who's a lawyer, former party president, and he's the Minister of Science and Technology and Citizen Services, but for some reason he was answering questions in the legislature about multiculturalism. And I interpret this as a, a sign that perhaps the Premier isn't happy with the way Theresa Watt was answering the questions, or the House Leader for the Liberal Party wasn't happy with the way Theresa Watt was answering the questions, so then they had to bring in a heavyweight, i.e. Andrew Wilkinson. So that raises the question whether Christy Clark is in a hurry to possibly bring John Yap back into Cabinet, and that's part of the motivation for this liquor policy review, because she needs a minister of Chinese descent, because there's such a large community of people of Chinese descent in, in British Columbia, and if they don't see themselves reflected back in the government and in the cabinet, that's going to create some political problems for the BC Liberal Party. Now there was another fascinating provincial story, at least I found it fascinating, was the revelation that uh, there's a movement afoot to uh, possibly create a new province out of Vancouver Island. Like this is, a, this is a long shot, it would require constitutional changes, it would require support of provincial and federal governments. That's a long shot, but uh, a couple of people in the Nanaimo area have put up a website and they're making the argument that Vancouver Island has 765,000 residents and that's more than six of the territories and provinces and therefore Vancouver Island would qualify as its own province. And it was uh, a colony unto itself uh, before Confederation, so they're using historical arguments as well. Uh, one of the issues that's uh, underlying this is that Vancouver Island has 14 MLAs, but only two are in the BC Liberal governments. The two BC Liberal MLAs on Vancouver Island are Don McRae in the Comox Valley and Michelle Stilwell in Parksville, Qualicum. So you've got 11 NDP MLAs, one Green MLA, Andrew Weaver, Oak Bay Gordon Head, and only two government MLAs. So, and that, that begs the question, what is it about Vancouver Island voters that causes them to vote in a different way than most of the rest of the province? And I would suggest that Vancouver Island voters are more environmental They've seen a, uh, an incredible loss of forest land on the island over the years. Uh, Vancouver Island is also negotiating. There's 14 treaties in place with First Nations on Vancouver Island, and that happened when Sir James Douglas was the, the colonial governor. So you have um, treaties in place. You have a more environmentally oriented population at the same time, there's a lot of frustration with the way the provincial government has dealt with the ferry system. And BC ferries, the fares keep going up. That's uh, irritating people who live on the island because they look at the ferry system as a highway. It's required to, to bring food and all sorts of supplies. So then that raises the question, if Vancouver Island were to become a separate province, the ferry system would actually come under federal government control because it would be a system connecting two different provinces. So actually by becoming an independent province, uh, it would be a way for both British Columbia and Vancouver Island to say to the federal government, you take care of the ferry system. So uh, as I said earlier, I really don't believe that this is uh, necessarily going to go that far, but it raises interesting questions and it also puts pressure may put a little bit of pressure on Premier Christy Clark and the BC Liberals to perhaps adopt more environmentally sensitive policies because there's a possibility of this uh, concern on Vancouver Island growing into a political brush fire.